Good morning all. I'm going to open this envelope. And inside is this. It's a oh, 20 character by four line LCD. Let's take off this protective covering. Yes, that looks very nice. Now, as far as I can tell, the connections to this are across the top, which is a bit of a nuisance because I wanted to stick it in a breadboard. So I'm going to have to have some long wires coming down to do that. Ultimately, what I want for this is to put it on my 8-bit computer, breadboard computer, sit it there. This thing's quite big, isn't it? Um, so that I can put uh, a Hello World message on there. And that is possible, even though this computer can't compute, because what it can do so far is generate uh, literal data and copy them to somewhere. My aim is to copy them to this and have a message displayed. But uh, for today, I don't want to get involved in connecting it to that. I'm just going to put it on a bit of breadboard. Where's my breadboard? Yes, yeah, like this piece here. Get the positive at the top sit it on there and then just put a few switches here um, an 8-bit dual inline switch for the data um, a smaller switch for the other control lines register select and read write although read write will probably leave low a little switch for the enable and just using those switches try and get some data on the display now we're not going to see it very well on here without it backlit so i was just looking at the back of this thing and we have got these points here marked anode and cathode but it does seem that one of them goes through this 510 ohm resistor the other one seems to go through a zero ohm resistor and then they go to the backlight so does that mean i can poke five volts directly on there without a resistor should we give it a go i don't want to kill this thing before i've even got it working but five volts oh yeah that's absolutely fine Five volts uh, in through the anode, down cathode, down to ground, and that lights up beautifully. So we just need to put that across the five volt supply. Good. Goodness me, if that's a date code, 2019-917, that's September this year. This is a very recently manufactured module. And don't think it was that expensive. Yeah, this one, 2004. Yeah, 20 characters by 4 character LCD module, HD44780, controller, blue backlight, only $3.88, free shipping, Survey 2014. So here's my uh, start, the start of my breadboard. Now if you're thinking, <laughs> Julian, that looks truly bizarre. Well, it is. Uh, but what I wanted to do, I didn't really want to solder to this just yet. I wanted to put it on here, poke these wires through the holes and just sort of suspend it there on that bit of blue tack and yet still be able to get to the connections so i think that could work a little bit of stress on these uh, points here so that they make a connection so now i need a guide as to uh, how to set this thing up with just switches and i've got the perfect article Yes, I'm going to be working from this article. It's how to use intelligent LCDs uh, by this chap. And this comes from Everyday Practical Electronics, February 1997. And he's very kindly provided a squirk it diagram of just putting some switches on the various pins of the LCD module. Uh, eight switches for data. Uh, that one is enable. This one is read write, which we can tie low. And then we need a switch for register select because one way you're putting commands into the module and the other way you're putting data in. Oh, we need a pot for the contrast. Right, Julian says 4K7 pull-ups for the switch on the data lines. Oh, where's that? That's there, 472. And I'm going to cheat with the pull-downs to ground. I'm just going to use the lowest value one in here. Oh, 470 ohms. Well, that'll do. Uh, it's kind of um, acting as zero ohm resistors, but I haven't got zero ohms. Right, that's it all wired up. Now, all the connections are a bit dodgy, but um, I seem to be able to uh, get it to work. Now, 
the first instruction to put in appears to be 0f, which gives us a cursor, and then the next instruction, 38, turns on both lines. Now actually the first line is the first and third lines, um, because this is 40 characters shared over these two lines, but they're split. Uh, the second line is the second and fourth lines, so to turn them on we need that 38. But the first thing I'm going to do is put in this 0f, so I put it on my switches. Now unfortunately the data lines are reversed in terms of binary, so d7 is over on the right here. So 0000, 00001111, that's 0f. Um, I need to put that in as a command, so I need to hold the second switch and click the first switch. And yes, we've got a flashing cursor. That's a result. Now I need 38 hex. Let's put that in as a command. Yes, that has turned on the other two lines. Now that slightly changes the contrast because it's struggling a bit to do that. Oh, I don't want those lit up. That looks good. Now we can put some data in. Well, I can put 38 in. I don't know what that is in hex. Let's soon find out. It's an 8, of course. Should have known that. And because we've got contact bounce, we're going to get lots of 8s. But I'm not too concerned about that. Let's try a capital A, which, if I remember, is 41. Oh, what's 4? Uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. Oh, the switch is falling out now. 0, 1, 0, 0. This won't behave itself. And... 41, that's it. And yeah, that is indeed A. Now you can see we're still on the first line, which is first and third lines. Uh, if I carry on entering, we now go to the second line, which is second and fourth lines. They are split and interlaced. And uh, yeah, that's my text going on to the LCD. So that all works. Um, now it's not going to be possible to write my name because of the contact bounce. I might be able to slug that with a cap. Actually, let's give that a try. So my favorite capacitor, the 3.3 microfarad tantalum. Let's shove that across enable and ground, which is there. Oh yeah, that's it. That's fixed it. I can now enter individual characters. Oh, I could write my name. Now clear screen, I think is a command of 0, 01. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 command so i need to press the upper switch enter yes that's cleared the screen oh what's a j well a cap j is 4a so it'll be o one o o one o one o let's try that there's my j now a lowercase u is 75 so i think i've put 75 on there Yes, this is going very well. Okay, L is 6C. I've got to be careful not to have this whole thing go crazy. Uh, C is 1100. 6C. Yeah, that looks good. I is 6969. Uh, 9 is 1001. Oh, get in, switch. Julie! Fabulous. A is 61. Julia. And N is, what's N? Looking it up in the table of ASCII characters, it's 6E. Oh, what's E? Uh, it's 1110, isn't it? So that'll be a zero. And these will be ones. These loosen up after time, so it does get a little bit easier. Julian, look at that. I've put my name on the LCD. No soldering involved. Yes, you can see here I was having a few problems and I thought that this pull down sill pack, which I've now lowered to 221. I found a 221. It wasn't in that set. Uh, so I was starting to pull these all down to ground, but in the end it doesn't seem to need it. The thing that caught me out was the data lines being back to front. I'm not sure if you can see this, but D0 is there and D7 is there. So unfortunately this reads, this is not readable binary because D7 is on the right here. But once you've got that all sussed, then yes, it's perfectly uh, possible to enter character data just with a little dill switch. 
Now, what's a space? It's 20 hex, isn't it? So, get in there. Uh, 0010 of zeros for this. Yeah, that's quite wobbly. Oh, that's not a space. That's some sort of strange asterisk thing. 60. But I didn't put 60 on the on the keys, did I? Why has that come up with that? Now, the interval is, how do I go back? How do I move the cursor back? Because I'm working in auto-incrementing mode. So I need a command to decrement the cursor position. Yeah, I've got to find that. Let's have a look. Uh, cursor, display and cursor shift. So I want to shift the cursor. So I want C there. Uh, C is, cursor move, move is zero. So I want 0001, zero. Or oh, I want to go left. Left is uh, zero. So 0001, zero, zero, don't care, don't care. Let's try that. Right, I think that's it. And it's a command, so I have to press the uh, register select. Oh, that is a bit strange. Still not sure I'm getting proper zeros on here, so I'm going to continue to put in little wire links to pull the uh, bottom end of these switches down to ground. Just not convinced by this pull down resistor pack at 220 ohms. And no, this just isn't working. If I put data in, uh, what's that data? That's uh, 10. Yeah, I think that's just blank data. If I put that in as a command, it just goes to that location. But it's not doing a cursor left, and I don't understand why. Um, I suppose I could try a set display address. So you set the high bit, D7, and then you put in a seven bit address. And I want to address uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I set it to go to address 6, let's try that. So that's the high bit on. That bit needs to be off. And then 6. There's nothing really to hold on to to put that in. So that's it. Put it in as a command. But that's on the second line. So why has it gone there? No, it's just not doing it at all. I don't understand. I must have got this thing into a funny mode. But I don't want to switch it off and reboot it because that will lose my name. Um, what I can do is a display and cursor home, which is uh, 2 hexadecimal. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 3 hexadecimal. 2 or 3 hexadecimal. Let's try that. Uh, so all the zeros, low bits are on. That's 3 hexadecimal. Put that in as a command. No, it's gone there. What? This thing's gone completely nuts. So unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to do a reboot, which means turning the power off. <laughs> it's a real shame. Lost all that nice data. Uh, now I'm going to have to set this thing up again, so that's OF to put the flashing cursor on. Put it in as a command. Ooh. Well, maybe this is the old classic battery problems. <laughs> so let's take these out and shove some new ones in. It wouldn't surprise me because this catches me out plenty. This is the fun of building stuff with batteries and dodgy wires that don't make a proper connection. Oh, that looks a lot brighter. Yeah, I think the display must have got itself into a tangle because new batteries, switched it off, left it for a good 10 seconds. It's now behaving itself again. Let's try the 38 command. I think that's turned on all four lines or two lines according to the... Yeah, they're all on. Oops, let's put that about there. And enter a character. 38 will be the number 8. And there are lots of number 8. So that's working again. But it's not a very good setup. Because all of these connections are a bit fragile. You have It's funny because this is a really deep blue when you look at it in reality. But on the camera it comes over as this very pale washed out blue. Which is curious. But that's it. The display works. It is this way around. We saw that from my name. So I do have the connector at the top. I've got to think of some. Well, maybe I'll use these grey ribbon cables. 
these grey ribbon cables and solder them in for when I put this on my 8-bit uh, computer breadboard. But I think that's proved that this works. It's responding to the HD44780 uh, commands. So yeah, that all looks really quite good. I just wanted to try this cursor left thing because I couldn't make it work before, but now, command, that's working a treat. So I can move the cursor back to wherever I want it. Uh, so I can start writing there if I want. Yes, I'm happy now. I think this, because of the low power, probably the low voltage on the batteries, had got itself into a sort of internal tangled state and just wasn't responding properly to the various commands, but it is now. I'm happy with that. The next thing is to put this on the 8-bit computer and program in a message. Hello world, obviously. Mm, looking forward to that, but for the moment, cheerio.